last week's episodes, I showed how to authenticate a user through Facebook and request certain permissions. And then once they're signed in, I showed how to communicate with Facebook's Graph API to fetch and post content as that user. In this week's episode, I'll be building onto this example app and integrating Facebook further through the Open Graph protocol. More specifically, what I want to do is when the user writes a review for a movie on this application, I would like to add some kind of notification on Facebook so the user's friends can check out the review and review it themselves. So here's how the Open Graph protocol works. Any page in your application can be treated as an object in the social graph, allowing users to interact with it. Uh, to do this, you need to add meta tags in the HTML of the page, describing it as an object, and then Facebook will parse this, allowing you to work with it as an object in the Graph API. So let's see how we can use this within our Facebook application. Now here's a quick tip. When you're jumping back and forth between testing an application and editing the settings, it's often helpful to uh, use a different browser so that way you can be signed in as a test user in one and still edit the configuration under your primary account on another. So anyway, when you're here editing an application, you can go to the Open Graph section, and here I can define what action is performed on our site and an object that action is performed on. So in this example app, a person can review a movie, and that's what I want to track with Open Graph. So let's get started with this. Now this brings us to a page where we can customize this action further. Uh, we can change the various tenses of the word review and uh, customize how it looks and so on. I'm going to leave everything at its default and save these changes. And next we can further edit the object, which is movie. And here it'll tell us what properties are required on our page's meta tags and which properties are optional that we could add as well. And we can even add some custom properties here. And this will show us how it looks as well. And let's just save this at its default settings. And the last step here is aggregation. This is when a user performs multiple actions on your app, such as reviewing multiple movies, and Facebook will aggregate those all together. So first we need to set what we want it to focus on in the aggregation, in this case, uh, the action, which is review. And we can set the styling, and we can do some other configuration of how it looks, and let's save this and finish it. And that's it. We now have an action and an object which we can use in our application. But how do we do that? Well, some examples are provided here, and just click Get Code. So this shows us some curl commands that we can use to post a new review, delete one, or list out reviews. Now, a couple of things to note here. One is that the URL here goes to the Graph API at cinematron colon review. So this is the namespace of the application, and then the action. And then the movie URL here would normally be the URL to your application, but let's check out what this URL here is that is displaying in this example. So I'll just uh, paste it in here. And it looks like this is an example object which you can use to do some testing. And if I view the HTML source, you can see the meta tags right in line here, so this page can be treated as an Open Graph object. Now this is really handy because when you pass in a URL to Facebook, it will need to uh, be able to access that and parse out these meta tags, which can be difficult to do in your development environment. So uh, you can just use this sample page as a little data that you pass to Facebook. Now you saw earlier how you can publish actions through the curl command, but how might you do this through Rails with the Koala gem which I've set up in episode 361? Well, let me show you here in the console. First, I'll fetch a user record, which I logged in as through Facebook. And then I can call Facebook on this, which we set up to instantiate a Koala client. And to publish an action, I can call put connections. And the action is for me, which is the current user. And the action's name is Cinematron Review. And then the object this is acting on is a movie. So pass it in as the key, and the value should be the URL to that movie, which I'm going to use that sample page, which I showed you earlier. So it looks like that was successful because we got an ID back. Let's check it out on that Facebook user. Now it's a little bit tricky to see where this action is showing up when I go to this user on Facebook. Uh, one place it shows up is on the user's timeline, but this test user doesn't have that enabled. To enable it, just go to facebook.com slash about slash timeline, and then click on get timeline to enable it. And then you can see it shows up here under recent activity, David reviewed sample movie on Cinematron. That works. So now instead of reviewing sample movies, let's review an actual movie in our application. To do this, I'll need to add the proper meta tags for each movie so that it will work on Open Graph. Now this should go in the head tag, which is in my layout file, so I'm going to add a yield column to here so I can insert content from other templates. 
So this means in my movie show template, I can do something like this, calling content for head to insert these meta tags into my layout. And these just set various open graph properties specifically for this movie object. And now when I reload the page and view the source, there are the meta tags. But we do have a problem. There's no way for Facebook to access this page to parse the content because it's just hosted on my local machine. Uh, one solution is to deploy it somewhere, but I'd rather keep it local so that I can fix problems quickly. Uh, the other solution is to use SSH tunneling, which I'll do here. Now there are many services out there to help with tunneling. Here I'll be using local tunnel, which is just a gem install away. So I'll do gem install local tunnel to get it. And since I'm using Ruby env, I need to run rehash so that I can access the command. And now I can run local tunnel and pass in the port that I want to make public. Now the first time you run this, you'll need to pass in a dash K option and point to your public key, which in my case is at SSH slash IDRSA dot pub. There we go. Now our Rails app should be publicly accessible at that address. So let's try it out visiting that URL. And there's our application. Now keep in mind that anyone will be able to access this app, which is currently running in development. So this means if an exception is raised, it might display some sensitive information. So you might want to run your application in production mode or maybe some kind of staging environment when you're doing this. And then next we need to edit our Facebook app and set that as our application's domain uh, to that local tunnel domain. And I'm going to set this for our authentication as well so we can sign in through Facebook. Now keep in mind if uh, you close the tunnel or maybe it times out, that will likely uh, open up with a different domain next time, so you'll need to keep this up to date. So I'll save these changes. And now we can try this out in the Rails console. Instead of publishing a review for the sample movie, let me paste in the URL to our local tunnel domain, which should use our Rails application. And we got an ID back, so that's a good sign. Looks like it worked. And visiting that user's timeline shows us that it was successful. There's our uh, review entry saying it reviewed that given movie, and clicking on it should bring us up to that actual application, and it works. So now that we have this working, let's add this behavior to the Rails application. Uh, this should happen when the user posts a review, which will be triggered by this create action. So when it's saved, I'm going to do something like this, where we check if there's a current user, and then perform the same line that I showed you inside of the console, basically publishing that Cinematron review action for the movie with that current movie URL. So let's give this a try. I'm currently signed in through Facebook, so let me uh, write a review here, saying great movie. And when I create a review, this is going to communicate with Facebook, which will communicate back to our Rails application. And this seems to be taking a while. I wonder what's wrong. Well, it finally finished, and it looks like Facebook returned an error, saying it could not retrieve uh, data from the URL. So for some reason, it wasn't able to connect to our Rails application. So the problem is that this Rails app is running under a single thread in development. So this means that when I communicate with Facebook to publish the action, it's going to communicate with the URL, which will be our Rails application trying to parse the meta tags, but it can't access it because it's still processing this create action that I originally sent it through the request, and it can't process multiple requests at one time. Now I really should be doing this Facebook communication through a background process anyway. So this way, if the job does fail, the user isn't impacted and I can easily retry the job. Now there are a ton of gems available to handle background jobs and rails, and I've covered many of them in past episodes. I'll be using delayed job here just for convenience because it has very few dependencies, but really go with whatever a gem works for your situation. Now I'll just do this very quickly here in this episode. Uh, I'll first add delayed job active record gem to the gem file and run bundle to install it. And then next I'll run the generator provided to generate the uh, migrations for the table. And then I'll run that migration. And then I'll run the rake task to start the worker. Now I'm going to move this Facebook communication behavior into a class method so that we can easily move it into the background. I'll put it on the user model and call it a share review and pass in the current user's ID and how about the movie URL for that given movie. So this means I can just move it into the background by calling it through delay. And then going into my user model, I'll paste in the code for this share review class method, which is very simple. It just fetches that given user and it does the same Facebook communication passing in that movie URL for the review. All right, so with all of that in place and the Rails app restarted, let me try posting the review again. And this time it immediately brings us back to this page saying it created the review. And going to our worker, it looks like it processed that job with no failure, so that looks promising. And going to that user's timeline, 
there's our entry. So that works great when it's communicating with the API in a background process. Now, sometimes when working with Open Graph, things don't go so smoothly, and the Facebook debugger tool is a great way to determine what's wrong. Uh, one thing you can pass into here is a URL to an Open Graph page. So let me click debug here. So this will tell us if Facebook was able to parse that page and if there were any problems doing so. You can see we did get a couple of warnings here saying that I should add an Open Graph description tag, and also there the image should be at least 200 pixels in size. So those are two problems I should probably fix before uh, going live with Open Graph. And it shows us the object properties it received and the raw meta tags that the page included. Also, be aware of Open Graph permissions. You'll need to have a publish action scope when authenticating the user so that you can share their activity. I talk more about permissions in episode 361. And it's a good idea to clearly tell the user what activity you will be sharing on Facebook and give an option to turn it off directly within the app. Now, once you're ready to go live, you'll need to submit your actions for approval because otherwise they will only be visible to developers and testers of this application. Now, this process will tell you exactly what else you'll need to do to make this app approved. Now, I want to finish this up with a quick mention about social plugins because there are some that work great with Open Graph, such as ones that display users' activity or recommendations, and you might want to consider adding these to your application. Well, that's it for this episode on integrating a Rails application with Facebook and Open Graph. Thanks for watching. I hope you found it useful.